Now, now let us start study diffraction for a, a circular aperture. So before going to do this, I have to show you that some limitations with the aperture size and the observation. So basically, we have two types of diffractions universally accepted. Fresnel and Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer diffraction. So, if you think about that uh, K R terms, R terms, that is uh, x minus x prime, K R is K x minus x prime. So, if you write this in an open form, this, that is the following, K x minus x prime is nothing but k square root of r square plus r prime square to x dot x prime. So what is x prime, r prime? So basically, if you have an opening, a hole, so you can represent this as r prime, and r is the point of interest. And you can write this in the following form. Take the r outside the square root of 2. That will be 1 plus r prime square over r square minus 2x dot x prime over r square 1 half. And then do the binomial expansion. You will get kr1 from the exponent 1 over 2, 1 over 2, r prime square over r square, 2 over 2, x dot x prime over r square. So if you insert these things, you will obtain kr. I kept the two terms, so I will just explain why I kept the two terms. The first kr, then take this term that is k x dot x prime over r, one of the r is cancelled, and that other term that is nothing but uh, k r prime square over 2r. You have more additional term, but ignore those things. So these two terms are important. So take the x minus x prime, which we have in the definition of the diffracted fields. So, so take a, make a binomial expansion and keep the first two terms and discuss two terms. They are related with the Fresnel and Fraunhofer uh, diffraction. So for the Fraunhofer diffraction, The geometry is the following. So basically, the situation is the following. So this term for the second term in the expansion, k r prime square over 2 r in the expansion is important. You can write the that term is a k r prime, r prime over r, that term. So basically, this is equivalent to dimension of the aperture dimension of the aperture uh, 
uh, and we have d over r. r is the region of the screen. So, in front of our diffraction, this value is very small. What is the meaning of this? So, d is much smaller than r. How about this? How this is scaled? That is scaled with what? d over wavelength. So, what is the relation between the d and wavelength? Actually, d, the dimensions of the diffracting aperture is greater than wavelength in general. But d over r is much, much smaller than 1. And as a overall, this whole term is ignored. Okay? The second term in the expansion uh, is ignored. And it is called as a small diffracting systems. For the Fresnel diffraction, this whole term, now instead of R prime, write the dimensions K D D over R close to 1. In the Fresnel diffraction, this term is important. So basically, even d over r is small, k d is uh, much bigger than that is the order of magnitude is 1. So, in that first Fresnel diffraction, that second term is important. And that is called a large diffracting system. I think if you make a length scale, this, this is the station. If this is the open core, okay, if so, Fresnel is somewhere here. No. Yes, Fresnel is somewhere here, and Fraunhofer is somewhere here, if they are the screen. But basically, in approximation, we will study for the Fraunhofer diffraction, we will ignore the second term. So, we will ignore the second term. And let us draw a geometry and start to investigate the diffraction from the circular hole for a Fraunhofer diffraction. So, the geometry will be the following. We have x y and z and we have the hole here hole here suppose that the incoming wave have a wave number k0 this is lying on the exit plane and making an angle alpha making an alpha with the z. So, electric field is 90 degrees to the k0. So, E incident again in the exit plane and making an angle alpha in the down. So, basically this alpha is the direction of the incident wave and this one is the electric field component. So, after the diffraction, K has a direction as theta and P also, you can look at the projection of this and you can define that the phi angle, theta and phi. 
of course, the propagation direction is changing. The photon frequency is the same. This is diffraction, okay? So we have an incident wave, and it, this is you have the diffracted wave. So we have to apply this, and we are we have to find that the diffracted field. So first thing. We have to take this integral. So first thing uh, is the following. This is equal to, instead of curl operator, I can write I k cross instead of curl operator. I k cross. And How about the e to the k r over r? K r is k x minus x prime, and that is equal to k r minus this term for the Fraunhofer diffraction that is ignored. The second term is ignored. So the dominant term is that. So basically, for that term, Kr is nothing but k small r minus k x dot x prime over uh, r and for the down term which term is important one over R term is important. So that would be equal to IKR cross uh, e to the IKR over R. This is the spherical wave term. The integral and cross E incident at the surface e to the minus IK dot x integrated through the surface. Yes, that's correct, correct, uh, because uh, what I wrote that k dot x prime that is correct because x over x r is the n hat n hat times k is the k vector that is k dot x prime so that's okay so close the parenthesis and for a given geometry we will try to evaluate the diffracted field. Once we calculate the diffracted field, we can study that the diffracted power per salt angle because we know that uh, the structure related with the absolute square of the diffracted electric field. I'll, I'll do this also. Now, So let us rewrite this in a more easy format. E to the IKR over R IK cross uh, and cross E incident E to the I minus IK dot X prime integrated through the surface. So what I need, I need to calculate that the incident field, it has some amplitude e to the i k0 dot x 
and oscillating uh, frequency omega. What is K0? K0 is equal to what? K0 has a projection along to Z and X direction. That is nothing but K cosine alpha along Z direction. Epsilon 3 is the Z direction. And K sine alpha uh, along X direction. Epsilon unit vector 1 is the X direction. This is the incident wave. It's, it is lying on the XZ plane. And if you plug this electric field inside here, this is a function of X prime. Therefore, you need to write it the X prime. So X prime vector is nothing but uh, X prime epsilon 1, Y prime epsilon 2, Z prime epsilon 3. So let's say that this let us write as a prime because when you plug inside the integral, it will be plug, uh, primes. So k0 dot x prime, k0 dot x prime will be k. So you will take the scalar product of this and that. And you have to evaluate this at the surface. What is the surface? At the surface, Z prime is equal to zero. So K zero dot X prime, what is the K zero dot X prime? Epsilon three dot epsilon three, epsilon one dot epsilon one. So that should be equal to K Z prime cosine alpha X prime sine alpha k z prime cosine alpha uh, x prime sine alpha k when you evaluate this at the surface z prime equal to zero this term will be zero that will be x prime sine alpha therefore the incident electric field which we are going to substitute in the integral will be the following. The incident electric field at Z prime is equal to zero will be what? So incident electric field is lying on the X Z plane, but the angle is down below the X by alpha. That is nothing but E zero cosine alpha epsilon one projection of the E1 e initial to the X that is cosine alpha and you have what else minus Zx so that is sine alpha epsilon 3 times the exponential k0 dot X prime that is equal to e to do I k X prime sine alpha. So do you agree? So I'm trying to be fast. So I write at the k0 on the exit plane. I write at the x prime. I make the scalar product and evaluate at z prime equal to zero. This term is dropped. And then I try to write the electric field, incident electric field. So incident electric field is lying on the exit plane, and this is in that form. So this stuff here is the incident uh, electric field. And if you take the cross product with N, which term will survive? What is N? What is N? N is what? Perpendicular to the whole. What is N? Epsilon 3 is N. If you take the cross product with Epsilon 3, this term will be 0. Only this term will be surviving. 
So the next thing, let me write the uh, electric field. I have uh, I e to the i k r over r and n cross of this. What is the n cross of this? Uh, epsilon 3 cross of this. This term will be 0. What is the epsilon 3 cross epsilon 1? Epsilon 3 cross epsilon 1? 2. Yes, this should be. So, and the coefficient is cosine alpha and you have k cross k cross epsilon 2. So if you take the cross product with n, so what is this? Uh, epsilon 3 cross epsilon 1, that will be epsilon 2, that is epsilon 2, and there was a k cross there. So that whole stuff here, n cross e, is nothing but cosine alpha epsilon 2 and cross product with the k. And the rest term, the integral, integral term is the following. We have e to the k x prime sin alpha, e to the k sin alpha x prime and from here, but from the other term you have minus i k dot x prime minus i k dot x prime integrated through the surface of the opening. We are seeing something here at the moment for the diffracted field. When angle is 90 degree, nothing diffracted. Cosine 90 is 0. So when the angle is 90 degrees, nothing will be diffracted because that will be parallel to the surf surface of the opening. Uh, so I'll do a little bit more work. The I need to define that the area element. So area element is somewhere in the opening. You can define that the area element using this radius and the polar coordinates. So that is nothing but rho e rho d beta. Beta is the angular displacement, rho is the radial displacement. So we use generally what r theta instead of r theta use rho beta. Okay? So that defines that the area element in the opening. Oh, okay? I need a de prime. Okay, let us leave that. What I needed more k dot x prime. k dot x prime I needed. So what is k? Three dimensional wave number. It is k sine theta cosine phi epsilon 1. k sine theta sine phi epsilon 2 k cosine theta epsilon 3. This is a three-dimensional k. 
after diffracted. Okay, depending on theta. Too many things there. We have theta phi, rho beta. Okay, but I will simplify. Then I need k dot x prime. What is x prime? x prime is x prime epsilon 1, y prime epsilon 2, z prime epsilon 3. k dot x prime will be k dot x prime will be x prime k sine theta cosine phi and the other term will be y prime y prime times k sine theta sine phi and the other z prime k cosine theta. This is k dot x prime, so simply take the dot product of these things. You have to evaluate this fact at the surface, z prime is equal to 0, therefore this term is 0. Okay. And what other thing? You are going to integrate it through the surface of the opening. At the surface of, uh, of the opening, you have d e prime rho, d rho, d beta. Therefore, what should be the x prime? What is the x prime at the surface? x prime is what? Rho cosine beta. If you take that the polar coordinates. So if you take that the polar coordinates, so this point, what is this? We have this angle is beta, this length is rho from the radial direction. So basically, instead of x prime, write rho cosine beta, this whole thing. Instead of y prime, write uh, rho sine beta, and the same stuff is here. So let me write this and then write the result because we will see the definition of the Bessel functions and I want to discuss uh, with the results as soon as possible. So I let me write the exponent of the integral uh, exponent of the integral. I need I have I k sine alpha I k sine alpha x prime x prime minus i k dot x prime. So that will be a little bit long, but then we will write this as a, a Bessel functions. So if you take the i k parenthesis, this is equal to the following i k open a parenthesis sine alpha instead of x prime, what is x prime? x prime is rho cosine beta rho cosine beta minus minus k dot x what is k dot x? So that is the first term was yes, i k sine alpha x prime. This is minus i 
k dot x. So in the k dot x, we have k, take the all k parentheses, write the k dot x prime in the following form, minus rho cosine beta, rho cosine beta, this term. Take the k parentheses, then write the sine theta cosine phi. Sine theta cosine phi plus the other term there, rho sine beta times sine theta sine phi So we take the all IK parentheses outside, close this. So this term is equal to IK rho sine alpha, this term, cosine beta, that term. And if you take the sine theta parentheses, sine theta, Parenthesis. If you take the sine theta parenthesis, you have cosine sine theta parenthesis, you have cosine beta cosine phi, cosine beta cosine phi, and what else? Sine beta uh, sine phi. Uh, this term is cosine phi minus beta. So the diffracted field will be the following. So diffracted field will be e times e to the i k r over r cosine alpha k cross epsilon two. So the, then the Integral will be the following. So we have the area element. We have uh, area element rho, d rho, d beta. Uh, rho goes 0 to a. Beta goes 0 to 2 pi. And uh, exponentially, e to the i k rho sine alpha cosine beta uh, minus sine theta cosine phi minus beta. So that should be e to the chi rho sine alpha cosine beta minus sine theta uh, cosine phi minus beta. Anyway, if you take this integral, you will obtain the form of the diffraction pattern in the following form. e to the i k r over r a square cosine alpha k cross epsilon 2 a bezel function, first order bezel function, depending on k a, some psi parameter that is important I will give you, k a over psi. So in somewhere else, there should be amplitude of the E0. So just insert it. If you carefully follow the steps, there should be some E0 incident field. So this psi parameter, 
used in the geometrical optic and that is nothing but it is the following sine square theta sine square alpha minus 2 sine theta sine alpha cosine phi so I did this exercise just to show you one thing that one thing is the form of the power emitted per salt angle and that is 1 over 2 real part of r square and that e cross h complex conjugate so if you do this carefully that is equal to 1 over 2 square root of mu 0 epsilon 0 r square e square and in that case that is diffracted field so if you take that the uh, square of this term again you, 1 over r square r square cancel e to the kr magnitude will be 1 you will have coefficient we know that the alpha and alpha is 90 degree nothing will be diffracted okay but that will be proportional to the proportional to the or let me write for you that is equal to 1 over 2 square root of mu 0 epsilon 0 and if you take the square of that you will have what a to the 4 e 0 square e to the 4 e 0 square cosine square alpha and k cross epsilon 2 and j1 ka psi over ka psi square so as you see that diffracted pattern is related with the first order square of the uh, first order Bessel function so I'm not going to do any more calculations I will just discuss what does it mean the special case is the following the special case when the incident wave is perpendicular to the surface alpha is equal to zero when alpha is equal to zero psi is equal to what alpha equal to 0 alpha equal to 0 that is equal to sine theta and the power emitted per salt angle at the screen proportional to the what j1 ka sine theta over K A sine theta square. If you investigate this Bessel function, so basically, what is the K A? K A is the number with the what? The diameter of the circular aperture times two pi over wavelength. So K A could be a number, but greater than one generally because if we say that the, this scale of the aperture is greater than the wavelength so suppose that the, these are the waves that is the wavelength lambda and if this is a, uh, a is the if wavelength is less than the aperture dimensions k is a number greater than 1 and 
depends on the J1, a number greater than 1, sine theta over sine theta square. So if you plot this, this is something like this. The power emitted per salt angle is something like this. Theta is the diffracted fields. When theta is equal to zero, when theta is equal to zero, this is uh, first order of Bessel function at zero over zero. You can use the Hopital rule and you can plot this. This structure is something like this. You have a great maxima and sharply drops and makes a little secondary maxima and then it vanishes. So this region, this region collects the most of the diffracted fields. And that region is approximately is equal to, so if this is theta, so sine theta approximately at Ka value. When the sine theta is close to the Ka, you can collect the all diffracted fields until the, the approximately the first maximum, not exactly, somewhere there. So if you plot this function for different Ka's, you will have a strong peak and that will drop to the minima and you will reach a very little secondary maxima at the angle related 1 over Ka. And if you study this with the geometric optics, the, the structure more or less the same. So all these calculations gives as a very nice and powerful result. The power per salt angle is related with the uh, square of the Bessel functions of a sine theta square and the first maxima is around uh, 1 over Ka. That is the region you expect from the uh, diffraction pattern which you did in the uh, optic classes using the geometrical optics. But in the geometrical optics you have the slits, not a uh, circular aperture. So that's all I want to say about the uh, diffraction. I, want, I didn't mention uh, one thing, uh, that is the bobinet principle. principle. So the Bobinet principle, principle is the following. So you can go over the steps by yourself and as a homework study the diffraction from the rectangular hole in, in, the, in your book. <coughs> homework chapter 10, question 14. You will study that the diffraction So in that case, not a circular, you have a rectangle here, you will study that the diffraction from the rectangle. So uh, let's see, okay, now let me talk about the Bobinet principle. Now here what you have, you have a hole and a screen. If you think about the opposite of this, what is the opposite uh, structure? You have a what? Opaque material, circular, okay? Opaque material, uh, which does not allow to any, any kind of radiation. And if you, and the, these are the open. Outside the opaque material, everything is uh, 
every radiation is passing. So suppose that this is the N. What kind of diffraction you field you will observe in that case? Did you understand the geometry? Opposite of this, complementary of this. You have an opening here and everything is closed. Now this part is closed, everywhere is opening. In the, in the, in the, if you have a circular aperture, you have a diffracted field like this. This was the bright part. Okay, let us say that this was the bright. If you have the same structure but opaque material which doesn't allow the radiation, what you have then? You have some shadow. Okay? And the field will be diffracted and the structure will be the exactly the same. Exactly the same. But this all will be in the shadow. Okay? You have some shadow behind this material, this circular material, obstacle. And when the shadow goes to zero, so you have some brightness and the shadow will increase. If you sum up these things, what you are going to obtain? If you sum up these things, what you are going to obtain? Nothing. Nothing. That is the Bavin principle. So, So, so that is the complementary fields. If you have an aperture or inverse, you are obtaining the same structure, but the bright part turns to be the shadow part. If you sum up these things, you can see that is it if nothing there. Okay. So. That's all about the diffraction and we studied the scattering and next time we will start the spatial theory of relativity.